Hello and welcome to this review of my Vissels LP85 keyboard. This was a commercial donation from Vissels. It was an easy accept because it's got a very interesting switch mechanism. My brother actually linked me to an article about this very keyboard when he read about it and I replies, got one underway already mate. <laughs> At first glance, it might look like a slightly different style variation of one of those Apple chiclet keyboards. Sorry, I keep calling them chiclet keyboards, even though that term was really reserved for keyboards like the IBM PC Junior, which had keys that actually looked like pieces of chiclet chewing gum. If anything, boards like these should be called... Rennie keyboards, maybe. Anyway, it looks like one of those with their crappy membrane scissor switches, which are a type of low-profile rubber dome mechanism. But the Vissels is actually clicky and optoelectric, so the notion of that quickly got my juices flowing. Let's talk about the keyboard itself first before I delve into the switches though. Effectively it's styled almost identically to an Apple aluminium keyboard, aka the AAK, in space grey I think Apple call it, except in a more intermediate form factor. And it does also use scissor style switches, except it operates optoelectrically like I mentioned. And it has RGB, which Apple's keyboards don't have, or at least not yet I think. Like modern Apple keyboards, it's also wireless, but they didn't include a dongle with it, so I bought the cheapest piece of dog shit dongle I could find, and it doesn't pass the Chromecast downstairs test. So, yeah, that's a bit annoying, because not only do you have to find and buy a dongle yourself, you also need to pair the devices yourself, whereas wireless keyboards with their own dongles usually pair automatically in my experience, which is a lot easier. It comes with a 2000 milliamp hour battery in it, less than half of what the key does from the previous video had, but I guess it's kind of unavoidable for such a low profile board. And yes, like the key does, it powers itself down when not used for a bit, and it wakes up rather sluggishly, which seems to be a fairly common thing for wireless keyboards like this. Now, I must admit when I started using this, it reminded me of why and how much I actually loathe low-profile Rennie keyboards like this. I reviewed an AAK a while ago, and my conclusion was that basically it would have been an okay keyboard if they changed absolutely everything about it, and now I remember why I said so at the time. There's little travel, and it's fairly stiff, so it's uncomfortable to use. It's very easy to make mistakes because the keyboard has little in the way of tangible topography for you to orient your hands. It's it's easy to press two keys at the same time because the keycap edges aren't tapered and they're very close to each other and it's difficult to get a good feel for it because the key feel isn't that much of an invent and on top of that the fucking keyboard's fucking raw! Vissels sent me a force curve for the keyboard. It's got two and a half millimeters of travel, which isn't that long, although I guess that's to be expected for a scissor switch keyboard. And it's got a very small but sharp dip in it, which you can actually feel, with a roughly 70 gram bottom out force and 50 grams at actuation. Compared to the AAK, the tactility is less severe overall, but it's sharper and feels cleaner, plus it feels lighter, which is good because AAKs tend to hurt my fingertips after a while. It feels less mushy as well, which is to be expected as it doesn't use a rubber dome mat, plus it doesn't sound that bad considering the kind of keyboard that it is. If I'm honest, purely smoothness wise, this is probably the smallest improvement of optoelectric versus the base switch that I've seen so far, but it is an improvement. That said, it's absolutely insufficient to turn me off of my revulsion for Rennie keyboards and I don't really like using it so I won't be giving this keyboard a spin very often after today. I can no longer allow the international Rennie keyboard conspiracy to sap and impurify all of my precious bodily fluids. I know there is a very large base of users, especially modern ones, who really like this style of keyboard for typing, and perhaps this would be a nice choice for them, but I myself am rather disappointed to be completely honest. And I think that is in part my own fault, right? I mean, what was I expecting? The second coming? It is still a Rennie keyboard. The clicky nature of the switches is a complete mystery to me. I've asked Vissels about how it works, but because their marketing department doesn't speak engineer, their engineering department doesn't speak English, and I don't speak Chinese, I couldn't get anything more out of them than that it's this part that makes the click, but I have no idea what it does to make that click, or whether it's a click jacket or click bolt or a bleeding click dildo stability ball for all I know. Obviously, being clicky, it's much louder than AAK type of boards, which tend to be very quiet, but it's not a bad sound, I reckon. It's very high pitched, but not rattly. 
Remarkably for such a short throw switch, there is a considerable mismatch between the click and the actuation point, but it's over the click, not before it. So you can only notice it when letting go of the key, not when pressing it. So it's not that much of an issue. The build quality is similar to an AAK. It's a monolithic aluminium chassis, not super thick but should be okay, except unlike an AAK it doesn't instantly die if you try to clean it with a moist towelette, because it's optoelectric so the switches are a lot more robust. For reference, I'm the acquisitioner for organic chemistry at my local university, and it's happened quite a few times now that either one of the cleaners or PhDs try to clean one of their keyboards like this, and they often just immediately break because the moisture gets trapped between the sensing membranes and either short circuits the assembly or corrodes the contacts. Either way, it's generally game over, as it's not easy to get the moisture out, especially as these aluminium cunts are super glued together like fucking honey nut cluster cereal, so you can't dismantle them without destroying them in the process. Seriously, Apple people, why do you guys do business with a company that deliberately makes their products impossible to disassemble? And the Vistles has it too. <laughs> when I asked how to disassemble the keyboards, this was their actual reply. I mean... What the fuck? According to the manufacturer, it weighs just 1.2 pounds. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in non-retard measurement units. Let me look that up. www.2nonretard.com uh, Mass... I think it's pound mass to grams. 1.2... I guess it point doesn't work, but that seems like it works out to 544 grams. Oh, I'm fairly light, actually. Thanks to nonretard.com. The keycaps appear to be thin, laser-ablated ABS. They come off somewhat easily. I think so far I've had two or something come off. But I've been able to put them back on without any permanent damage, I think, which can be an issue with many other scissor switch caps. Like I said, I really hate that they're not tapered and so flat. It's very frustrating to use for me. Personally, I'd recommend something like the Havit keyboard I reviewed earlier if you want something low profile with caps that don't suck major ass through a straw. The caps lock key is backlit ridiculously badly, but admittedly it's the only key that suffers from this. The lighting overall isn't too bad, I guess. Oh yeah, you might want to check the spacebar stabilizer because it gets stuck in the downward position so from time to time your cursor just yeets off like it's being chased by a giant gaping asshole monster. Yeah, I guess I was a bit grumpy when I wrote this part of the review. <laughs> The LP85 is their most expensive offering at the moment at $120 and it's also completely sold out at the time of writing, but I'll post a link to their product page in the description of the video anyway. I think that makes it basically roughly the same cost as an AAK depending on where you're from, but from where I am the cost is very similar. At that price point, I'd say that's definitely a good buy. The keycaps are less prone to breakage, the switches are much more reliable and I think nicer to use, and depending on whether you like clicky keyboards like me, they sound better as well. Plus, you get RGB if that's your thing. So, in that context, I'd say it's a good alternative over AAKs, if you like non-full-size layouts, of course, as it's only available in this 75% form factor, which has a relatively standard layout, by the way. If you don't like Rennie keyboards, like me, I don't think there's anything here at all that's going to change your mind, so you can just steer clear. It's not quite as revolutionary as I'd hoped, but it's still an improvement, and sometimes that's enough. Like I said, this is not really for me, but for you legions of low-profile deviants, this may be worth checking out. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.